There's a powerful saying that goes, sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. These words resonate deeply with many of us, especially when we find ourselves stuck, clinging to things that bring more harm than good. Whether it's a toxic relationship, a bad habit, or the weight of past mistakes, letting go can feel like a loss, but it's often the path to real freedom and peace. In Islam, we are reminded that everything happens by Allah's will. And sometimes, what we hold on to can prevent us from receiving the blessings that are meant for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His wisdom, teaches us to let go of what holds us back, so we can move forward, trust in His plan, and find peace. In this video, we're going to explore five ways Allah guides us to release the things that are weighing us down. These lessons aren't just about letting go, they're about growing, healing, and trusting that when you release something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it with something better. Way 1. Accepting that some relationships are not meant to last. One of the hardest things to let go of is relationships, whether it's a friendship, a romantic relationship, or even ties within family. Sometimes, no matter how much we care, Certain relationships start to drain us emotionally and spiritually. Holding on too tightly can prevent us from moving forward. In Islam, romantic relationships outside of marriage are considered haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set clear guidelines for how relationships between men and women should be conducted. Romantic involvement before marriage can lead to emotional and spiritual harm, even though many people fall into these relationships thinking they will bring happiness or fulfillment. In reality, these relationships often bring more confusion, heartbreak, and even guilt, because they go against the boundaries set by Allah. The Quran tells us, do not approach unlawful sexual intercourse. Indeed, it is ever an immorality and is evil as a way. This verse emphasizes that not only is unlawful physical interaction forbidden, but even approaching or engaging in romantic relationships before marriage can lead to sinful behavior. Letting go of a haram relationship may feel difficult, but it's a way of protecting yourself spiritually and emotionally. By trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom, you open the door to something better. A relationship based on trust, respect, and the foundation of marriage. Many people struggle with this in today's world, where romantic relationships are normalized and often encouraged. Social media, movies, and peer pressure can make it seem like having a romantic relationship is necessary for happiness. But in Islam, the only relationship that brings true peace and blessing is one that is within the boundaries set by Allah marriage. So, letting go of a romantic relationship that isn't halal isn't about losing something. It's about protecting yourself from harm and trusting that Allah will provide something better when the time is right. Way 2. Letting go of guilt and past mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. It's part of being human. However, one of the most difficult things to do is to let go of the guilt and shame associated with our past actions. Sometimes, we hold on to these feelings for years, allowing them to weigh us down and prevent us from moving forward. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to seek forgiveness and let go of the guilt that holds us back. The beauty of Islam lies in its emphasis on repentance and starting fresh. No matter how big the sin, if we turn to Allah with sincere repentance, we are promised forgiveness. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Every son of Adam sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. This hadith reminds us that making mistakes is part of life. But what's more important is that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for His forgiveness. Holding on to guilt doesn't serve us. It only keeps us stuck in the past. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, The one who repents from sin is like the one who did not sin. This powerful hadith shows us that when you sincerely repent, it's as if you never committed the sin in the first place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases it from your record, giving you a fresh start. In today's world, many people carry the burden of past mistakes, 
feeling unworthy of forgiveness. But in Islam, we are constantly reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is greater than our sins. So if you're holding on to guilt, take this as a reminder that it's time to let go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to turn to Him, and His door is always open. Letting go of your past mistakes allows you to free yourself from unnecessary emotional baggage and focus on what lies ahead becoming a better version of yourself and trusting in Allah's infinite mercy. Way 3. Releasing the need for control. Many of us spend a lot of energy trying to control everything in our lives, our careers, relationships, finances, and even the future. We hold on to the belief that if we just manage things perfectly, everything will work out exactly the way we want. But the reality is, we are not in control of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate planner. Sometimes, we even go as far as trying to control the people around us, pushing them to adopt our way of thinking, believing that we know best. Whether it's in family matters, friendships, or even in work situations, we try to force others to follow our perspective, convinced that what we think is 100% right. But the truth is, everyone has their own journey, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for each person. In Islam, we are taught tawakkul, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means accepting that while we can put in effort and give advice, the ultimate outcome is in Allah's hands. The Quran reminds us, and rely upon Allah, and sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. This verse encourages us to release the need for control, whether it's over our own lives or the lives of others. Trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings peace, knowing that He is guiding us and those around us toward what is best. When we let go of the pressure to control every situation and every person, we not only reduce our own stress, but also give space for others to grow and learn. Trusting in Allah means believing that He knows what's right for us and the people we care about, even when things don't go according to our plans. Way 4. Letting go of fear and embracing faith. Fear is one of the most powerful emotions that can hold us back. Whether it's fear of failure, fear of the unknown, or even the fear of telling the truth, it often stops us from pursuing opportunities or trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. We hold on to our comfort zones, afraid of what might happen if we step outside of them or speak up. The fear of telling the truth, for instance, can make us hide our real feelings or avoid difficult conversations. But in Islam, honesty is a fundamental value. We are taught that telling the truth, even when it's hard, brings us closer to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, said, Truthfulness leads to righteousness, and righteousness leads to paradise. This hadith reminds us that while fear may make us hesitate, truthfulness is always the right path. In Islam, we are reminded time and again that faith, or iman, is stronger than fear. Fear may limit you, but faith liberates you. When you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you no longer let fear dictate your decisions. The Quran says, Verily, the believers are those who, when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble, and when His verses are recited to them, it increases them in faith, and upon their Lord they rely. This verse highlights that true believers rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when they feel fear or uncertainty. Instead of letting fear hold them back, whether it's fear of telling the truth, fear of change, or fear of the future, they put their trust in Allah's wisdom, knowing that whatever happens is part of His perfect plan. Fear can keep us stuck in jobs, relationships, or situations that don't serve us, simply because we're afraid of the unknown. But letting go of fear and embracing faith in Allah allows us to move forward with confidence, knowing that Allah will always guide us to what's best. It's natural to feel fear, but we must learn to replace it with trust in Allah. By letting go of fear and embracing faith, 
you open yourself to the countless opportunities, blessings, and growth that come from trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan for you. Way 5. Trusting Allah's plan and letting go of what wasn't meant for you. Sometimes, no matter how much we plan or how hard we try, certain things don't work out the way we want them to. It could be a job opportunity that didn't come through, a relationship that didn't last, or a goal that feels unreachable. When things don't go as planned, it's easy to feel disappointed or frustrated. But that's when we need to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a greater plan for us. One we may not always understand right away. One of the hardest things to do is to let go of what wasn't meant for you. But in Islam, we are reminded that whatever is meant for us will never miss us. And whatever isn't meant for us, no matter how hard we try, will never reach us. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Know that if the whole nation were to gather to benefit you with anything, they would not benefit you except with what Allah has already decreed for you. And if they were to gather to harm you with anything, they would not harm you except with what Allah has already decreed against you. This hadith is a powerful reminder that everything, whether it's a blessing or a challenge, is part of Allah's decree. It teaches us to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, knowing that no matter what, we will only receive what is written for us, and nothing can harm us unless it is by Allah's will. Letting goes of what wasn't meant for you is a form of trust. It means surrendering to Allah's will, believing that He knows what's best for you, even when it's hard to accept. Sometimes, what we think we need or want might not actually be good for us, and Allah, in His wisdom, guides us away from it. Many of us struggle to let go because we believe that we're losing something valuable. But the truth is, by letting go of what wasn't meant for you, you're making space for something far greater. You're making room for the blessings that Allah has already written for you. If you've been holding on to something that isn't working out, take this as a sign to let it go. Trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is better than anything you could have imagined. And by releasing what wasn't meant for you, you are freeing yourself to embrace what is. As we've explored these five ways, it's clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His wisdom, teaches us to let go of the things that weigh us down. Whether it's releasing toxic relationships, guilt from past mistakes, the need for control, fear, or even what wasn't meant for us letting go is an act of trust in Allah's plan. Letting go doesn't mean you're losing something. It means you're making space for what's better. By releasing what isn't serving you, you allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you toward new blessings, opportunities, and peace that you might not have imagined. It's not always easy, but trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for you, even when things don't make sense right now. If you've been holding on to something that's weighing you down, ask yourself, is this helping me grow or is it holding me back? Trust that when you let go, you're not alone. Allah is always there, guiding and protecting you. Before we end, I just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Your support helps us continue sharing these messages, and it's a great way to stay connected. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a like and share it with others who might benefit from it. Remember, letting go is a form of strength, not weakness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the wisdom to release what no longer serves us and the courage to embrace the beautiful plan He has in store for us. I mean.